I'm Gene Calabatisto, the president of CAA's defense and security business. Uh, could you give us an update on military training and, and how it's advancing? Certainly. Uh, CAE is, uh, is very large in the market worldwide for military training. And what we're seeing in the market is that training is becoming increasingly integrated. And by that, we mean that training systems today have live, virtual, and constructive components. The difference is uh, that today we integrate the live, virtual, and constructive component into a complete solution. Uh, that trend is uh, increasing and customers are seeing more value in the integration of these different parts. And the fidelity of training, is, is that improving or is that helping to improve? Uh, the, the fidelity is improving by quite a bit and I'm consistently impressed by the desire of customers to increase the fidelity and what we call the immersive nature of training. Uh, one example is the investment that we make, and by virtue of that, the investment our customers make in our visual systems. Uh, of course, we all understand what HD TV looks like, but it's not just the resolution of the visual systems, but the ability for them to portray uh, for the military, tactical scenarios, tactical forces, and even the ability to see an aircraft at a distance. Uh, the, the investment is increasing, uh, and we're seeing visuals today uh, that are higher resolution. Uh, they are also uh, 3D in nature, and the realistic immersive environment is continuing to increase. And the military is turning towards private um, operators like you to train basic to operational crews? They do, and that's a distinct and, and a, a trend in the military market today. Uh, militaries around the world uh, are integrating higher and higher technology in their systems and by virtue of that in their training solutions. But there's also, uh, we're also in a time where it's increasingly difficult to find the most highly qualified people. We're all in a bit of a war for talent. They're turning into industry to fill that gap and today we, all, we build systems, we integrate them, but increasingly we operate those systems on behalf of the military. And you operate a NATO flying school? We are. It's the NATO Flight Training in Canada program. Uh, there we train the next generation of men and women who will fly frontline fighters for the Canadian Forces, the CF-18, uh, and uh, uh, fourth and fifth generation fighters in the future. Uh, that's a great example of what we call an integrated training system. Uh, we, we help not just uh, with the, the provision of aircraft and simulators, but we provide courseware, instruction, we manage the safety program and offer a full solution to generate that next generation of fighter pilots. And that includes uh, baby pilots being trained and you also train um, instructors as well, do you? We do. Well, we train, in that case, we train our own instructors and that's not uncommon worldwide. In those cases where CAE will provide flight or simulation based instructors, in many cases we have to train those instructors ourselves. Uh, we have to teach them a little bit about the airplane or aircraft they'll be flying if it's not something they've flown before. Uh, we have to make them familiar with the courseware we'll be using, but more importantly we have to tone, turn those professional aviators into the best instructors and teachers we can find. But where do you see uh, training and simulation going in the future? Well, training and simulation in the future is going to be increasingly technology focused. Uh, and, and one example of that, and we're on the, the point of introducing these technologies today, we all know about uh, augmented and virtual reality, but I think when we look further down the road, three and five years, we're going to see a much more integrated information environment. We're going to see companies like CAE have access to big data sets, uh, the, the performance data of pilots, instructors, and aircraft, and simulators. Uh, we're going to use that data and couple it with data analytics to get insight into the data, more knowledge we have today. And we're going to use artificial intelligence to take that insight and help the instructors and help the pilots become better at their jobs. And you're also getting involved in the operational side of uh, military flying? We are, and, and by that I mean that uh, one of the components of training that the military held very close to itself was, the, uh, was live flight training. Not the classroom and not in the simulator, but the actual cockpit instruction was almost always typically done by uniformed personnel. Today, because of a shortage of personnel, uh, we're seeing that militaries are more comfortable having a company like CAE provide in-flight instruction. 
One example of that is at the U.S. Army's Fixed Wind Training Center in Dothan, Alabama. We provide the facilities, the simulators, the aircraft, but also the instructors. So CAE's instructors are today are training as many as 600 Army and Air Force aviators uh, in that program. And the aggressor squadrons? We're not doing any aggressor training today, but it's a very interesting market. It's a very close adjacency to what we do in live flight training. The only difference there is that that would be a CAE employee and a CAE aircraft providing that aggressor training or what we call surrogate air. So we're looking at that market and it's an easy extension to what we do today.